Good morning, folks. Welcome back to Higher Chemistry Calculations. More calculations, to be exact. Uh, this is their second video, and we're going to have a look at titrations today. I'm not going to do any of the practical aspects of actually doing a titration, um, because well, I can't be bothered. And anyway, that's what classrooms are for. Um, so here I'm going to focus mainly on the calculation itself. I have done a National 5 titrations calculation. Um, this one is actually surprisingly similar, believe it or not. So basically, there are three steps to uh, any given titration calculation at a higher. Number one, um, it's often easier if you do a little sketch so that you realize which chemical is where. So here's my incredibly epic burette. Uh, here is a conical flask, which I'll sometimes refer to as a beaker. I know I'll get shouted at when I call it a beaker, even though you sometimes do titrations in beakers. Although you shouldn't, of course, because when you slosh it around, it's less likely to fall out. Oops, I said I wasn't going to do any practical aspects. Sorry about that. Um... So you will, 99% of the time, have a chemical, we'll call this chemical A, and here you know the concentration of it, and you know the volume after you've dripped it out, of course, until the colour just changes, the indicator just changes. Chemical B down here, um, you tend to know the volume, uh, and 99% of the time you don't know the concentration, and that is very frequently what's being asked for. I did say frequently, I didn't say always. Um, this is often just a written description. So um, you want to be careful that you identify the two chemicals correctly, A and B, and where their locations actually are. How sort of do you know which one? Well, this is the one that's being... Uh, that This one here is the chemical that you're using to actually do the titration on this chemical here. So this chemical here is being titrated by this one. You can catch that from the wording. Also, um, the volume on this, the volumes are always like nonsensical numbers like 19.6, um, 19.4, you know, 19.7. Um, um, this one here is usually a set volume like, say, 20.0 or 10.0 or something along these lines. So you can spot from the volume which one of these you're dealing with. Um, right, so what are the three stages then? Stage one is calculate the moles that you dripped out of your burette when you were actually doing the titration. This, by the way, is a burette, just in case. Oops, I'm wandering into practical territory again. Burette. Don't think and write at the same time, hey. How do you do that? You do that by concentration times volume. Please remember that this has to be in litres, so they always give you a volume like in centimetres cubed, so it's actually divided by 1,000 to convert it into a number of moles. Stage two, um, as ever in chemistry calculations, you need to have a balanced equation because stage two is you're going to, now you know the moles uh, that dripped out the burette, so this is all about stage one. Stage two is use the ratio, the mole ratio, to work out the moles that were in your bottom flask. So, stage two, use the balanced uh, equation ratio oops, to work out the moles in the bottom flask. Because let's say, for example, you happen to drip 0 0.12 moles out of here, and the ratio is uh, one of these to two of these, according to the balanced equation. Well, I said 0 0.12 here, so you would multiply it in this case, and 0 0.24. Boom. That's how many moles are in the bottom beaker. That's usually not what the question is asking for, although it can on occasion do that. So at National 5, stage 3 was always simple. It was always calculate the concentration in the bottom beaker. Stage 3 at higher, a bit less friendly. I'm going to say calculate for the bottom flask whatever it is the question wants to know. So whatever is being asked for. Sometimes they'll ask you for a mass, for example. Um, and that's okay, you can do that. Because you know the moles in the bottom flask. Um, so the mass is just the moles times the GFM or whatever it is you're dealing with. Um, there is a... Let me get a different colour pen. Let's switch to purple for... Um, oops, I'll just juggle that. Um, let me switch to purple for a little tripwire the SQA will frequently um, set in your way. 
if they're asking for mass, then that's easy. As I said, it's just moles in the flask, which we just worked out from here, knowing the moles that you dripped out of the burette. So it's the moles times GFM. But what they'll often do is they will often say you started with, say, a one litre solution, and you take 10 centimetres cubed out of that, and you titrate the 10 centimetres cubed. Lovely. And then you do all this, and then they'll ask for the mass of, for example, copper, but they'll ask for the mass of the copper that was in the original one litre bucket, not just the mass of the sample that you've worked out here. So uh, if they're doing masses, don't forget to watch out for what I call a small sample out of a big bucket question. And you might need to scale up. For example, if you had one litre originally, and then you're titrating, say, 10 centimetres cubed, then that is one hundredth of your original bucket. So when you work out the mass in here, you have to multiply it up by 100. Let's look at a couple of real world examples. So there you go, guys. This is a titration. A titration, uh, don't forget, a titration is just simply a very carefully balanced chemical reaction where you add just enough of this chemical here to just react all of that chemical there as shown by an indicator change. <clears throat> Excuse me, voice is poor this morning. So there you go, guys, three stages here. Work out which chemical is where. You might want to write the information if you want to on your exam paper. It's your exam, why not? Doodle on, make your life as easy as possible. Um, you could write the concentration here, you can write the volumes in here. Don't forget, of course, you'll, if you get this sort of situation here, you'll have to work out the average. <clears throat> At higher level, there should, in theory, be no bigger than 0 0.2 difference. Uh, the 0 0.2 difference between these readings. So actually, technically speaking, that's a 0 0.3 difference. I'd say go away and do it again. Um, so let's say that 19.4 isn't there. Let's scrub that one. Let's say we do this reaction again and you get 19.8. Then, lovely, you take the average of these three numbers and if you can't work out in your head that the average is 9.7, you, uh, you need to go and see your maths department. Um, so work out the moles of drip to the barrette using concentration times volume. Use the balanced equation ratio of whatever to whatever to work out. Now you know the moles that dripped out of here. You can work out how many moles you must have had in here. Um, by the way, it's, it's often something like two to five, you know, a bit more awkward at higher. Um, so if this was A, for example, and that was B, personally, I would turn that into one, two, was that two and a half, isn't it? Um, so if you know the moles of this, you multiply it by two and a half. Or vice versa, in fact, if you know the moles of this, you divide it by two and a half to get the moles of that. Um, but whatever works out for you. And lastly, um, <clears throat> calculate whatever they're actually asking for in the bottom. Because it can be concentration. Yep, it can be. It can be mass. Uh, and if it's mass, then please be careful. The same can apply to concentration because they may have diluted the sample before they did the titration. So watch for that. Watch for, like, scaling up any nasty trip wires in the question. It's so easy to get so wrapped up in this that you come up with your answer and you forget that they're asking about something else. So, um, <clears throat> RTFQ time. Let me show you a couple of real-world examples. So, what's going on here, guys? Concentration of nitrite ions, NO2 minus. We don't use that much. And the water supply was determined by titrating water samples with acidified potassium permanganate solutions. If you haven't watched my um, Redox uh, one, you might want to go back and have a look at that because the Redox one explains why you actually need to add acid, apparently, randomly um, to your permanganate. Uh, well, it actually explains it here, but go and watch the video anyway. I need the money. Uh, money as if I'm getting anything off this. Uh, so here's the oh, look, balanced reaction. Very nice. Two to five. So we don't have to do a balanced equation on that. Um, name the most appropriate piece of lab to measure 25.0 samples. That is a pipette. And again, I've wandered into practical territory. Because how do I know it's a pipette? Because it's a nice round number. So it's not a burette. If it's 25.6, you'd use a burette. Because of 25.0, you get pipettes in 25s. And you can't use a beaker or a measuring cylinder because, well, they suck, basically. Um, especially beakers for accuracy. That's why they bothered specifying 0 0.0. That's how you know. Um, <clears throat> so if it was me, I would actually at this point sketch this out. Let me zoom out a wee fraction now that you've seen what the question's about. I think I'll sketch what's what. Um, so by titrating water samples. So the water sample is here. So this is your water. 
this will contain your NO2 minuses, and you're titrating it with acidified uh, potassium perchlorate. So KMNO4. It's actually just the MNO4, of course. The K is a spectator. I'm a Muppet. So there's your MNO4 minus. Let's put some numbers on this. 21.6 centimeters cubed of 0 0.05, that's a concentration moles per liter, was required. Okay, so they've even told you don't even to work at the average or anything. Wow, and this is a gift for three marks. No wonder this was a specimen paper. Um, so let's put some real numbers in here. We need um, 21.6 centimeters cubed. And the concentration is 0 0.015. And here you've got your 25.0 sample. So that is 25 centimeters cubed. And um, that's moles per liter. Let's do my three stages then, guys. Stage one was to work out the moles of uh, permanganate. So moles of MnO4. That's concentration times volume, which is 0 0.015 times the volume over a thousand. I'll just show off and do that in my head. 0 0.0216. If this was an exam, of course, I would double check myself before I wrecked myself. I need my calculator. Excuse me. According to Windows 10 calculator, that is um, 0. Point, not much. 0 0.000324. So that's the moles of permanganate. Stage two, I said was to use the balanced equation. So we're interested in the ratio between permanganate and a nitrate, which, oddly enough, is 2 to 5. That's, I promise you, I didn't set that up earlier on. 2 to 5. And we know the moles of this. So uh, I said earlier on that's going to be 1 to 2.5. So let's take that number of moles there, multiply by 2.5. Gives us, um, so stage 2. The moles of the NO2 minus, is it? Yes, it is. Nitrite is 0 0.00081. Excellent. Um, stage 3. I haven't actually found what they're wanting me to work out yet. It would help if I read the question. Calculate the concentration in moles per litre. Was there anything odd done to this? Let me just go back and check for a dilution anywhere. No. Okay. In that case, calculate whatever the question's actually asking for. Let me zoom out a touch so we can... Come on, come on, phone. Be nice. No? Fine. Don't be nice then. Um, that's probably because it's fully zoomed out. That would explain it. So, concentration of NO2, uh, the nitrite, is moles over volume, which is this, which is our moles, 0 0.00081 over... The volume was 25 over 1,000, so 0 0.025. And divide by 0 0.025 gives us 0 0.0324 moles uh, liters to the minus one. And I've just probably broken my own golden rule because I'm an idiot. If we go back and read the question, it does actually say in the question, gives you the unit moles per liter. So I've said frequently, don't put units into questions if they actually give you so I'm just going to delete that and stick to my own rules, even though I know it's correct, and it annoys me. So 0 0.0324 moles per litre. That's the other thing they can sometimes do. They can sometimes do a weird unit. So keep an eye on these units, guys, because this calculation always comes out to moles per litre. If they've done something weird like moles per centimetre cubed, you need to compensate for that. Um you would multiply that answer by 1,000 in that case. Um, and that's that example done. That was an easy three marks. I think that would only be two marks in a modern paper, to be honest. This was a specimen paper. For the extra three, they'd probably ask you to calculate the average, you know, to work that out. Or there'd be some other little trick involved. They might not give you the balanced equation, get you to balance it. Something along these lines. Let's have a look at one more. Let's have a look at this one. This is an interesting one that cropped up just a year or two back. Uh, and it's a really nasty one because of a little twist that they've added, the exactly the sort of twist that I want you to be aware of. So it starts off looking all innocent. The concentration of hypochlorite, OCl minus, unusual ion that. It's a wonderful ion that enables us to stay safe and with bleach, for killing bacteria. Can be determined by a redox reaction that involves two steps. Step one, excess of acidified potassium iodide is chucked into the bleach, and this converts the iodide ions 
in the stuff that you throw in into iodine. And they give you the balanced equation. We'll come back to that later on. Step two, the iodine that you actually made in step one is then titrated with this stuff here, sodium thiosulfate. So this is our actual titration reaction here. So what was the point of step one? We'll come back to that at the end. So let's skip this one. Let's have a look straight to the question, straight to the titration question. A 25 ml sample of a diluted bleach was transferred into a conical flask. So 25 ml of the bleach put into a flask and this potassium iodide, like it says in step one, was added. The iodine that you made was then titrated with 0 0.098 of thiosulfate and it required an average of exactly 9.0 to reach the end point. Okay, all good so far? So far so hoopy, as Douglas Adams would have said. Calculate the concentration in moles per litre of sodium hypochlorite in the bleach. Now this threw a few people off because sodium hypochlorite isn't shown as reacting with the thiosulfate. That's because it doesn't. The thiosulfate reacts with iodine. Where did the iodine come from? It came from the hypochlorite. So this is more like an advanced higher question where it's actually a multi-stage reaction. You're taking the thing you actually want to identify and turning it by reacting with this into something else. And then this gets reacted in the actual titration. And yet the question's asking, it tells you the data about the titration, but asks you about the original chemical. Now, that isn't as bad as it looks, because if you have a look at the mole ratio here, one of these makes one of these. So however many moles of iodine you actually found in your titration reaction, is exactly the same number of moles as hypochlorite as you had in the bleach. But it did throw a few people off, and I totally see why. Let's go on to do the actual titration calculation itself. So stage, uh, what's going on here? You've got 25 mils of the bleach is transferred into a conical flask. Excellent. So that means our bleach, in other words, our iodine, because we've turned out the hypochlorite into iodine, effectively, I know you can't do that, don't shout at me. Uh, it's not alchemy. Um, but it's the same mole ratio. So the iodine's in here. Uh, do we have a volume for this? Yes, we do. 25 centimetres cubed. Uh, that means the S2O3, the thiosulfate, must be in here. So this is sodium thiosulfate. Do we have a concentrate? Yes, we do. Concentration 0 0.09. Am I still in short? Yes, I am. So that's moles per litre. Do we have a volume for that? Yes, we do. Nine, precisely. So we don't have to faff around. Um, unusual that to be 9.0, because that's another potential distractor. Some people might think that's an accurate volume. It belongs in the bottom. Let's do our three stages. Stage one, moles of thiosulfate. S2O3 is concentration times volume. So moles of thiosulfate is that, according to the calculator, stage two. Let's look at the balanced equation in the titration. This time, this is the actual titration. So if that's the moles of, it's a two to one. So we'll take that number there and half it because we're going that way. We know the moles of thiosulfate. We're working out the moles of iodine. So moles of iodine. Um, so that doesn't take a calculator to do. We can do that in our head. Zero, 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 four, four, one. And lastly, once again, RTFQ, what do they actually want? They want a concentration in moles per litre. So that's okie dokie. So the concentration of the iodine, which of course is equal to the concentration of the hypochlorite, the OCL ion that we're originally dealing with, because it's a one-to-one -one reaction here. Nearly pointed to the wrong thing. So concentration is moles over volume, which is that divided by 25 over 1,000. So according to my sums, that is our final concentration there. I won't put a unit in because there is famously a unit in the question here. <clears throat> it would be, I'm going to go back to the thing that I really think you shouldn't put units in, despite the scientific side of me saying that's the wrong thing to say, simply to ensure you get all your marks. Because if you just put moles there, that is not a unit of concentration. And you'd lose a mark, which would be catastrophic. Thanks for listening, folks. Hope you found this useful. If you did, please uh, subscribe if you fancy. Don't subscribe, of course, if you don't fancy. I'm not going to bully you. My job's not to bully you. My job is to help you. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.